Locked and Loaded, round six of Formula D dragged us rice boys to wine country up in Sonoma, California to watch the top drifters throw it out in the highly tight and technical course at Infineon Raceway. The seven hour drive was brutal, but thanks to Mo Duran and Mitsubishi, we managed to get a new 2009 turbocharged Lancer Rally Art with satellite radio to pass the time a lot quicker. Drivers were hitting speeds of over 90 miles per hour on the straightaway, followed immediately by braking and correcting to get through the S-shaped course. These factors, tied in with the lack of practice day, gave drivers difficulties that showed immensely during practice sessions. Car after car went off track, knocking over cones, kicking up debris, and plowing through mounds of dirt. Our boy Pat Mordaunt notched 13th in the top 32, leaving us with our fingers crossed that he'd keep up the superb driving when it came time to qualify for the top 16. After a night of wine tasting sessions, we found ourselves at the track again bright and early on Saturday morning, fighting our way through crowds of spectators and checking the vendor area to see what was going on. We even had a chance to catch up with a couple of the former and future Rice Girls to get their predictions about this event. Uh, I have the most indecisive Rice Girl ever. <laughs> Asti Sardo with me. Uh, who do you think is going to win this round of Formula D? Robbie. You know, he's good, so maybe he'll win. I'm not sure yet. Hopefully. <laughs> In the first match of the top 16, Samuel Hubinet locked in top qualifier with an overall score of 97 points and managed to use that V10 SRT muscle to bump out Ryuji Miki and be the first one to advance to the grade 8. Drift Alliance's Brian Turk got a little love tap from Ken Gushi Sion who managed to maintain his drift and coast into the grade 8. In the first run between Reese Millen and Robbie Nishida, Robbie came in a bit too hot and lost control leaving him with a zero, and too big of a deficit to try and catch up. In another trip to the top 16, Kenji Yamanaka put up a huge fight against Conrad Grunwald and his eardrum blowing Corvette, but was overmatched and overpowered by the American V8 muscle. Tanner Faust was one of the few drivers that looked comfortable on his track as he whipped his 350Z through the turns and advanced to the grade eight, while Michihiro Takatori tried to play catch up with him in his huge R34 Skyline. The matchup between Dai Yoshihara and JR Von Gittin was extremely tight when it came to driving abilities. But JR edged out Dai and locked down the win. In his old 240SX, underdog pick Wild Bill Sherman took out Stefan Verdier. The battle between Chris Forsberg and Kyle Mohan was tight in the first run, but in the second, Kyle lost his grip, leaving him with a zero. Although Hubinet scored nine in the second run against Turek, it wasn't enough to overcome the zero he got in the first, and Turek advanced to the semis. Conrad appeared to be coming in too wide upon entry, and Reese wasted no time taking advantage and stepping up to the final four. In the first run between Tanner and JR, both drivers maintained composure, but Tanner came out with a slight edge in points. Both drivers scored zero on the second run, and Tanner moved on to the semifinals. Neither Chris or Bill scored high on the first runs, leaving only their second run to show their skills. Bill took the win and advanced to the final four. The first matchup in the final four was a battle of the road circuit with Reese and Ryan duking it out. Though both cars are nimble and both drivers skilled, Reese's experience allowed him to snatch the win. Bill stayed up tight on Tanner's 350Z and gave him a good run for his money, but Tanner eventually pulled away from the victory and advanced to the finals. Bill Sherman met Ryan Turk in the consolation round. Smooth as could be, Bill outdrove Ryan and locked down third place. The final saw stunt drivers and former roommates battle for first. It's hard to tell if Tanner or Reese drove better, but they both put on an amazing show for the crowd as Tanner notched another victory. You know, the course is hard because it's a long braking zone, and so there's a big long handbrake, and it's still an attack track because under braking, you can really crash easily into the car in front of you. So it's a, it, sh it certainly feels committal, and it feels like you're attacking all the time. You know, all season long, we've been gaining points on Samuel and Tanner and uh, this is the first event that I've actually lost some points to Tanner. You know, we're in third, uh, we've gained some on, on Samuel, but it's really gonna be a battle of those two. Maybe I can just mix it up a little. First podium ever. Really? Formula. So how's it feel? It, it's a long time coming. I've been two years chasing this and it's awesome. I love it. Your family was out here too, weren't they? Yeah, yeah my mom. Wanna get some shout outs for them? Oh, I love my mom. I couldn't have done it without my mom and my stepdad. Those guys are my brother and my dad, dude. This, my family's awesome. I wouldn't be where I am today without their support. <laughs> All right, that was round six of Formula D. The sun's setting here at Infineon Raceway. It's getting really cold. We got to head back to our VIP suite at the Days Inn Hotel. Wait, it's a motel. Anyway, make sure you check back for the Formula D finals at Irwindale Speedway on RiceBoyTV.com. So, better luck next time. Um, Jesus loves you. <laughs>